we're going to also check out on what would be the best practice that you can set uh, whenever you're sending out emails in Techmatics to manage your hard bounces, to manage your errors, and also to minimize the invalid emails from your contact list. So I'm going to show you how you're going to create a smart list, how you're going to create an email list, and maybe how to manage your statistics and you can maybe keep a very healthy like email sending domain inside Techmatics so that you will uh, have a good reputation in sending out emails and your emails will go instantly to inbox and not going to spam. So I have, uh, hang on. So I have here with me Jay and Fabi, uh, Waterford Tech Experts. So if you guys have any questions about Techmatics, you can just email them, Fabi at techmatics.com and also Jay at Jay at techmatics.com. Uh, for me, uh, not at techmatics.com. And if you have something similar or something specific to support, email us at support at techmatics.com. So yeah. So let me just maybe try to uh, open up my screen. But do you guys have any particular questions for me about the system? Any things you are maybe having some trouble with? Any issues you're currently having? So we can maybe try to discuss it before our uh, training for today. Anyone from the group? I think we're all good. So yeah, so uh, Sonia is all here. Thank you for jumping on with us, Sonia. So I'm going to share my screen. If you guys have any like questions for me about the platform or stuff like that, just put your message on the um on Zoom uh like chat, and I'll just check on it. So yeah, I hope you can see my screen now. So I'm currently on my demo account. So what we're going to do today is I'll maybe just give you some preview of the new updates or the previous updates set by Google and Yahoo for the uh, new email compliance before we can uh, jump on and like maybe manage your, man uh, your mailing list or also on the ways on how you can send out emails in Techmatics. So yeah, so I'll just head over to settings just to give you some uh, like a quick preview on the new emails uh, like verification or the new email compliance set by Google. If you go to your settings and you go to your email services, if you don't have this set up, please let me know. You can just email me at supportedtechmatics.com so we can help you step by step on how to set this one up. So yeah, so on your email services, uh, this is a new compliance set by Google and Yahoo. All of the users or all of the people who are sending emails from a CRM, uh, regardless of whatever uh, provider, it could be Techmatics, it could be any other CRMs, it could be MailChimp and other like softwares, they need to have their own dedicated domain set up on that exact software for them to send out emails into Google and Yahoo. If you guys don't have this set up and you might be thinking that it's still working for me even though I have this set, uh, set up, Yes, it is still working, but eventually it might put your emails at risk. So in order for you to have a verified sending domain, we need to add, I think, a total of six records added to your DNS in order for us to verify your sending domain inside Techmatics so you can send emails to like different users for different uh, from different providers. This exact implementation or compliance set by Google and Yahoo. So if you guys have a lot of people on your mailing list coming from at gmail.com or at yahoo.com, you might be uh, greatly affected with the new email compliance. So we really, really suggest to uh, create your dedicated domain in order for that that you can get we can get your uh, sending domain from Techmatics verified but the very important thing with, uh, with that aside from setting up uh, all those records for the dedicated, uh, dedicated domain you need to start sending your emails from a valid business email so a valid uh, business email looks like for example your name at domain.com. So your emails needs to be coming from a valid business email or a dedicated uh, uh, a domain email. So you are no longer allowed to send out emails from, for example, not at gmail.com or not at gmail.com. It needs to be coming from not at techmatics.com because that's my domain uh, in order for you to have um, a verified sending domain inside Techmatics and to avoid that your emails might be blacklisted from the Gmail server or the Yahoo server. So yeah, do you have any questions about it? If you have, you can definitely just uh, leave a message in our chat bot, or you could also send me an email from Techmatics. Uh, can I do this from a CNA in a subdomain? 
Hey, Philip. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Let me just try to maybe break uh, break through the screen. Uh, if I go to dedicated domains and IP, uh, I actually already have tried to set up mg.techmatics.com, but let me just add a domain for you so you can uh, have some idea on how it works. Um, usually, we really suggest to um, add a dedicated domain via subdomain. So it should be coming from mg.yourdomain.com or that your, uh, yourdomain.com.au. So it depends on you as long as your host name is mg. mg may, uh, means mailgun. This is just to help you or maybe um, what it called is. Maybe just for example, if you are using like different subdomains for like different servers, for example, if you're if we will be using mail that your domain dot com, um, the mail record are usually um used for Gmail. I hope I'm being clear with this one for our Gmail, especially if your external inbox mm -hmm. or your, uh, you're using a uh, Google Workspace for emails. So yeah, so we suggest to maybe have that mg that your domain dot com. Yeah, we definitely have an article for this one and also a training video. Philip, I'll send you an email. Jay, can you maybe help me uh, send Philip the tutorial on how to set this up so uh, he could also take a look? So, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's basically how you're going to add a domain. I will go through this one because um, um, I don't have the access to my DNS. But I'll just verify this uh domain right here so you can see what are the records that will be being added in order uh, once you set up mm. your dedicated domain or verified domain so this records consists of six records um three text records two mx and one cname records so the two records includes the spf the dkim and the dmark yeah here's the dmark and the mx records is basically uh used for your technetics inbox and also we have here this another C name for Mailgun. So these are the total of five records that needs to be added in your account. If you are not sure on how to work this out, you can just email me at supportedtechmatics.com. I can send you a Zoom link so we can jump on a call to sort this out. Or if you want to do it by yourself, we also have a training for this one on our YouTube. Uh, I also have Jay. Maybe, uh, Jay, can you maybe just have the YouTube link into the Zoom chat, please? So you can uh, you guys can check it out. So yeah, so that's um that's two things. One is to have your uh dedicated domain uh, verified under email services. That's on settings. And another best practice would be uh start sending your emails from a verified valid or business email. So it could be coming from net at domain.com, net at techmatics.com, and maybe um don't send out emails coming from like at gmail.com or at yahoo.com. So, yeah, just give me one sec. Let me just try to go back and then I'll show you some of the email statistics on how you go, how you can go into maybe uh, check on it. So, yeah, so that's all good. So, let me just try to go to our email campaigns because I tried to send out emails purposely earlier to our invalid emails just to maybe like do some like uh demo today. But I don't recommend you to do that. But let me just maybe try to go to contacts. So, these are all my contact records in Techmatics. Most of them are pretend emails and some of them are our team's email. So, so for example, let's check artificial art tour. Techmatics also has its own verifier or email verifier. If you're familiar with uh, Neverbounce and some similar softwares that will help you to clean your list so you can get rid of those people who have invalid emails, emails who has history of hard bounces and stuff like that. Techmatics also has those um, in-house feature. So for our email verification, if you're going to check on the exact contact, on emails, you will see that their emails will be marked invalid if that email was invalid. But let me just show you another sample for an actual client or an actual email with a valid email. So let me just try to check if I can get my email here. Uh, nah. Here you go. Uh, maybe I'll just do that. If I'm going to check on that exact contact record, which has like, you know, probably unverified email, 
you will see that their email will be uh, marked as verified or valid. In that way, you will know that uh, this exact person is a real person. I can send email to this person and stuff like that. And also for your invalid emails, we could just take it out from your email uh, to, from your mailing list. Or you also have the option to maybe delete them from your contact records. So yeah, let me just go to settings. In order for you to have those email verifier turned on, you need to go to business profile and you need to enable this verify email address when first email is sent to the new contact. Uh, just to give you a heads up, we uh, this is actually a paid, um, a paid uh, what do you call this feature. I'll send you over the cost uh, for the uh, for this feature on our like Zoom chat. So let me just try to paste that in. So for the cost of the email verification, uh, it's uh, for your ten dollars. You can get two hundred. Uh, 2,855 people um, verified with their email address. So yeah, so I've sent the information in the Zoom chat so you can maybe check on it. So yeah, so let me just go back. And for example, if I'm going to go to my contact list and you want to maybe create your own mailing, uh, mailing list to take out those people who have invalid emails, what you can do is you can go to your filters right here on the top right of your screen. And then what you're going to do is you need to click on add filter and the filter that we're going to add in order for us to get rid of those invalid emails. So we can start using this list as maybe our master list or maybe our uh, mailing list for our newsletter and stuff like that. Look for email here and then you need to go to this valid email. And then mm. we need to uh, filter that their email should be valid in order for us to create the smart list. If you're going to click on apply, you will see out of 46 records, I only have uh, five records that is valid in here because those are uh, pretend emails that we try to upload in or uh, for the sake of the demo. And then once you filter that out, you definitely have all the valid emails into one list and you can use them to target your mailing list, newsletters and stuff like that. So I'll just save this mark list as maybe I'll call it as uh, my mailing list. And you can just click on save. And that's basically it. So you now have your mailing list for those people who have valid lists. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, these are actually valid emails. Let me just try to check on filters. Uh, yeah, because I think I already have this one set up. So, yep, yeah, okay, 19 records from here for all the people who has valid emails. So I'm going to go to all of the contacts. This smart list right here are basically um, a list of all those contacts you have here, but filtered on some specific field. So it could be filtering by country, filtering via tags, filtering by opportunities and stuff like that. So that's how you can uh, create your smart list. If you're going to click on more, you can see uh, uh, the other like smart list I created over the uh, over time. And then if you want to maybe rearrange a smart list or maybe rename it, you can just click on manage smart list here on the top, uh, on the top tab, click on manage smart list. And from here, you can just uh, basically move stuff around. So for example, the mailing list I created earlier, I'll move it onto very, uh, I think the very top of my list so I can just easily find it. Uh, hang on, sorry. Let me just go to my smart list. Click on this line right here, put that there. And that's basically how you're going to move it. And by default, if you're creating your smart list, this smart list is only visible to yourself. So it means if you have any staff members, any virtual assistants or any like like account managers and stuff like that, the smart list you just created won't be visible in your end. For you to maybe share it to them, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this uh, like lines right here and make sure that the smart list is being shared globally to all of the users of the account. Because if you're not doing this, this smart list is only visible to your end. This is just for you if you want to share the smart list to the other users, especially if they are sending out emails on your behalf. So yeah, so that's basically smart list and that's basically contact list. So what I'm going to do now, I'll show you something here from a marketing and emails. I sent out a test campaign earlier, including the valid emails from my mailing list. Don't do that. I don't suggest you, uh, for you to doing that because it might affect your email health. 
But in my case, for example, this is the email template I sent earlier to send out the email campaigns. If you're going to click on send, go to load more statistics, you can see the statistics on how the emails were like sent out to the users. As you can see, I only have um I have one hundred percent delivery. But if you're going to go to like this individual list right here, you can see that I have a lot of people in the error mm -hmm. tab. So I have a lot of people here because these are pretend emails. If this contact list are already marked uh as a valid inside your uh contact list, you should be all good because we're excluding them from our contact list, right? But for you to maybe try to manage them, to maybe take them out from your contact list or maybe um, like tag them into like invalid or hard bounces and stuff like that, this is the step-by-step -step on how I usually manage all the people or the recipient of my email campaigns. The first thing that I do is I head over to the error, uh, also to soft bounce and hard bounce. And what I do is I export this list. So I'll export this. And then after you've done exporting that, what you're going to do is you need to head over to your contact list and re-import those contact lists. Re-importing re those contact lists won't create any like double ops or like duplicates. Uh, importing the contact list will only uh, like update the exact uh, the existing contact list inside your account from the CSV file you just imported. So let me just click on import contacts here. here. And what I'm going to do is I'll just upload a file from the import I did, uh, from the export I did. So this one right here. And then click on next. You have the option to map all the fields here, but I'm just maybe mapping the email because that's the only essential contact details that I need. So I'll just click on don't import data with in, uh, like in match columns. And the most important stuff is I go to advance and tag them. Since these emails are coming from my error tab, I can maybe tag them as error emails or you have the option to how you're going to name it. But after you have added that tag, when you click on submit, all the people from the CSV file will automatically be added as an error email tag. So if I'm going to my contact list, if I'm going to filter my contact list with tag, and the tag that I'm going to filter them with will be the error email. Uh, you can now see that I have all the contacts that I imported earlier. So since we have captured those contacts who are, who like, for, for example, bounce back from the emails and stuff like that, what you can just do is head over to your mailing list and update your mailing list via filter. So since we have here an existing filter for all the people who only have valid emails, we can actually add another tag, uh, another filter that is basically tag. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that this, be, uh, this exact contact list is filtered with those people who don't have the error mm -hmm. email tag. So we can take them out from the list. So what I'm going to do, I'll change the condition into it's not. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to call it er uh, error emails. And mm -hmm. that way I can take out those people who has error email tag from my contact list. So I don't have to like, uh, what do you call this? I don't have to deal with them until the next time I'm going to send out newsletters or email campaigns to my users. Make sure if when you, whenever you're going to like uh, update your smart list, click on save so you can save your changes. So yeah, so I'm going to close this down. Any questions so far about that? Are we all good? Yeah, I think we're all good. So Jay already also sent out the uh, list of uh, YouTube training videos. So you guys can also check this one out. So yeah. And now since we already have like filtered out our mailing list, we already have created our mailing list. What we're going to do now is we're going to send out emails to our contact list. So what you're going to do, you have like different ways to send out emails in Techmatics. You can either maybe go to your contact list, highlight everyone in that you're going to send out emails to. And then if you want to send out emails to all of the records inside your account, because uh, this action only highlighted all the people from the first page, just click on select all six records so it can select all the people on your contact list. And then what you're going to do, this is a very easy way to do it. Click on this send email, the fifth icon onto the bulk action on top. 
click on send email and this is basically where we're going to send out emails. Just click on OK, proceed. Type in the emails that you want to send out. So for example, Nat test, I'm, I'm sending it from Nat Techmedics.com, email subject and then email content and stuff like that. And then you have the option to send it now set it as scheduled time or send it at the drip mode. So if you guys are not familiar with drip mode, drip mode is basically gradually sending out emails. So for example, if you have 100,000 emails in there, you can maybe uh, set it as drip mode to maybe send out emails for, uh, for example, maybe 100 emails for five minutes or 200 emails for, per 10 minutes or stuff like that. So drip mode is basically gradually sending out emails. Uh, just in case if you got some maybe replies and you can keep an eye with all the reply, uh, incoming replies from the email campaigns you've set. So yeah, so uh, when creating emails like this, the email will be sent out to your users as a plain text type of email. But if you want to have a formatted email with a header and a footer, what I can maybe suggest is you can uh, select from the templates. If you guys already have set up some templates for you, uh, you can just use them. Just look for the title here. But so uh, in my case, I'm going to use this master email template that I got here so that the email that will mm. go out to my users will be a templated email. So you can just click on edit. And then basically um, update uh, the content of the emails and stuff like that. Uh, when changing all the elements for the from the template, just click on that actual element. And you have all the configuration or customization option on the left-hand side. Uh, for the text, you can just type in all the text here um, without like, you know, without text boxes and stuff like that. That would be fine. The buttons can, can be configured into different ways. For example, for this button right here, you have the option to, uh, for the action for the button to redirect people to a certain URL. Or you also have the option to redirect them to a new email file if you want to maybe have a downloadable file here you can maybe change the cta for this one too for example uh download your guide here and then you're going to upload the file for maybe a pdf or maybe a worksheet that you want them to have access to so you have also that op uh, the option you also have the option to have a telephone so they can directly call you or um either for any like unique uh, actions that you want to set so yeah, so but let's have for example, I'm okay with this email. Just maybe uh be careful with the custom values. Uh, because usually, for example, if you're missing a bracket from this custom values, this email might not be sent out to your users. Mm -hmm. But if you have some uh some maybe problems with uh emails that's sending out, you just definitely email me at supportedtechmedic.com so I can check on it. So yeah, so, and for the socials, just click on the individual socials, click on the pencil icon to update the URL, but that should be all good. So I'll just save this exact template right here. And if you're okay with that, you can just click on, uh, no, another heads up is for um, emails, location email or custom values will not work with this exact uh, way of sending out emails. So you need to actually type in your actual email in order for you to send out this email. And then once you're ready, just set an action. Action is just basically in-house labels on what you are. Uh, so we, we can keep track on the logs and what you did. So for example, I'm just going to label what I did. So manual email to users, or you have the option to maybe just put in any scribbles, just in any text or stuff like that. This is not necessary unless you want to check your audit logs. And then after that, you can just click on send email. And that's it. So that's basically how you can send out emails to all of your contact lists. But for example, if you want to send emails to a specific smart list, just simply switch over to that exact uh, mailing list. Do the exact step. Highlight everyone that needs to be included to the newsletter. Click on emails and you can start building your emails from here. So yeah, so that's the first way. Any questions so far? I think we're good. Uh, yeah. So uh, hang on, I think I missed something from Philip here. Uh, does the only uh this is only affect the email address we are using to send out emails, or does it affect those who are also receiving emails? It will actually affect um your email address and also the users because uh for example if your emails will be blacklisted from like the google server or the yahoo server 
basically the exact email that you're using to send emails will no longer allow to send emails to any Gmail users or Yahoo users. Or I think it actually affects you as the business owner who are using that email. So yeah. Is that all clear, Philip? Do you have any uh follow so, up with that? So so if I'm using a email, you know, Philip at Philip.com, mm -hmm. does does that if is that affected by this? Uh yeah, you actually need to create your own, I mean set up your own dedicated domain for that, Philip. But that's one um uh what do you call this? That's one um SOP being tick off. You already have your business email, but you might need to set up your um dedicated domain for that. Uh, register to philip.com. So you can uh, set up something like mg.philip.com here so we can have your dedicated domain inside Techmatics verified. So if I have my website hosted on philip.com, can I set up a subdomain and still deal with the email issue through a subdomain? Yes. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to add a subdomain called mg.philip.com. It won't affect any of your business process or your websites. And oh, so I have to go I, emails. Mm -mm. I have to go to where I host, and I have to create a subdomain called mg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where, and do you, so mm -mm. where do you have your DNS hosted, Philip? With GoDaddy. Oh, if you're in GoDaddy, it's actually easier for you. Since Segmetics has a direct integration with GoDaddy, what you can maybe just do on your end, uh, Philip, is just click on dedicated domain and IP, add uh add domain, just put in for example mg.philip.com. Uh sorry, I um, think I hope maybe I'll just do that. Just click on add and verify. And then after that, the system will automatically capture that your email is coming from GoDaddy. And it will automatically link the domain for you without you manually adding those records in. So we have like, I think four providers supported with this exact method. First is GoDaddy. Second is Google Domain. Third is Cloudflare. And another one would be Ionos. So if you have your DNS uh, hosted from those provider, it's easier for you to add those records in. So for this exact uh, D DNS, I it's, it's a pretend. It did not capture it, but automatically you will have a pop up saying that it's from GoDaddy, authorized domain, and stuff like that. So, so, yeah. if, so if I'm also setting up a courses.philip at philip.com subdomain, would I do the same thing? Yes, definitely. Just doing the same thing, Philip. Okay. But of course, it, it, the courses, it needs to be under client portal settings yep. and then domains. And basically, GoDaddy will do everything for you. Okay, so one of the videos that I saw earlier today said that I had to go do a bunch of things in GoDaddy, but what you're saying is there's now an integration, so I don't have yes. to go to I don't have to go to my my C record or my DNS in GoDaddy. I can do it all through Techmatics. Yes, mm -mm. I think okay. it, that could be maybe an up the up outdated like tutorial because we actually have this uh, update. I think like two months or three months ago, so. Uh, this is actually new, so that's why we can just automate everything from Techmatics. If you have your DNS you. hosted from those four providers, no problem. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I think we should. And so be, if I'm uh, doing, mm -hmm. if I'm doing that and I have questions, I can just send a note to email uh, to email? support at Techmatics dot com. Support yeah. at Techmatics. Okay, thank you. Uh huh, and we have something from. Uh, Sonia, you have to do it manually on Wix, Sonia. So Sonia is like asking, is is it the same way with Wix, or do I have do you have do I have to add them manually? So the thing with Wix, Sonia, with what we have uh encountered with people who host their like website on Wix or DNS on Wix, is for Wix we can't add a customized MX records. It's basically rerouting us to a default MX record for your Gmail server. So I'm still checking on with Maria. Maria is still like setting up her calendar for this one. So she can maybe reach out to you and help you with your Wix uh, situation. Because with, uh, for example, if you haven't GoDaddy, other servers, actually Sonya, allows multiple MX records being added with a DNS. But for Wix, it only allows five records to be added. And those five records needs to be the default like MX records. 
So we are not allowed to add like mm -hmm. customized MX records. So that's has been a problem. So you have the option to maybe migrate your uh, DNS hosting to Cloudflare. So we, you can have a free hosting from Cloudflare or uh, yeah. So I think that's the only workaround we can do because there's no way we can update uh, the Wix uh, like protocol for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, yep, so I think that should be all good. So let me just uh, show you the second way on sending out emails and techmatics. If you go to marketing and emails, if you go to email builder, just to maybe give you some idea so you won't get confused with this one. Email builder is this is where we're going to create the email templates. So the email templates are basically those emails that you can use to like send out emails from like a bulk list or maybe the emails that you're going to attach to a workflow to send emails and stuff like that. So this is basically where you're going to uh, create your templates for the emails that you're going to maybe reuse from time to time. Let me just show you um, a clear sample of how the email templates look like. So for example, for this exact email template right here, if I'm going to edit that one, you will see that you only have the option to customize this template, but you don't have the option to send this email out to your users. So if you can see here on top, it only has a uh, save template here and it don't have the option to send out emails. It is because this is where you're going to build your email and this is not the section where you're going to send out your email. If you want to send out your emails, what you can just do is just head over to campaigns and maybe create your email from here. Or you can also, hang on, let me just try to check. Nope, this is not the one. Oh yeah, we can actually do it from here. Just click on, uh, I'm currently on email templates. Just click on you. And in this exact template right here, you choose the templates that you're going to send out as an email campaign. So in our case, we choose the Black Friday earlier, right? So just choose that Black Friday email. And then automatically that email template will be uh, converted as an email campaign. And as you can see on the top right, you now have the option to send or schedule this email out. So that's the difference between email builder and email template just for you to, maybe if you're confused with that one and stuff like that. But yeah, so it actually has the same like UIs and like, an, you know, customization and stuff like that. But the only difference is we now have the sender schedule option here where you can send out emails uh, right now, schedule it sometime, batch schedule it, and we also have RSS. We're going to maybe have a separate training for RSS because it covers a lot. But I'll just, for example, put, put it in send now. Sender email will be your email. Sender name will be your name or company name, stuff like that. For the subject, basically the subject. And for the preview, this is uh, all, only optional. But it will be a great addition if you can have a preview text for your emails. So you get you can maybe have like a like five words type of preview text. Uh, the email that we set up for the text toolbox actually have like preview text. So you can have your subject, for example, um, join our tech toolbox today, and the pre preview text could look like uh we're going live with our coordinator and stuff like that. So you can have some preview on what would be the content for the emails. So yeah. And for the recipient, this is the most important stuff. You have the option to choose the contact manually from the list. For example, if I'm going to click on plus, if you're if you only have like a small small amount of mailing list, you can just choose those mailing lists that you want to add to your uh, recipient, or you can definitely uh select all the contacts that's inside the system. So you can send out this uh this email to all of your contacts. Or you also have the option to send it via smart list. So smart list is a very uh, important uh, step for you to maybe create, uh, I mean, start sending out email campaigns and newsletter and techmatics. You can definitely have the option to not have it, but it will be very, very easier for you if you start creating your smart list. So when we click on send smart list, just click on plus icon and choose the smart list where you're going to send the emails from. So for example, I want to choose my mailing list. I want to choose all the new members. So you also have the option to choose multiple uh, smart lists for you to send out those emails. Let me just try to delete it. And another way is to choose from tags. So when you remember earlier, we created a tag called error emails, right? Obviously, I'm not sending this out to everyone. 
but you can also choose your recipient for these emails for a um from a specific tag being added to them. So yeah, so that's the second step, or I mean that's the second way to send out emails in Techmatics. Uh any questions about it? We're good. Okay, I think we're good. So yeah, so that's another way. And another way to send out emails in Techmatics is to do it manually via inbox, or you can also have it on workflow. So let me just try to open up a workflow here. Uh, what sec? Let me just try to, yeah. So for example, if you have a workflow here, let me just try to create a workflow. For example, maybe I'll create, um, seven days nurturing sequence for my clients. So what I'm going to do with this workflow is I'll add in seven emails in a single workflow that will automatically send out every day for the next seven days. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll call it seven days nurturing, uh, nurturing email, hang on, nurturing email sequence, mm -hmm. uh, sequence. And then for the trigger for this one, we can definitely have a trigger. For example, when we add a tag, when the form has been submitted and stuff like that. But I'll maybe just do it manually. So this workflow will have an empty trigger so I can have a demo on how to add people manually into a workflow. So again, I'm leaving this trigger blank. And the step for the workflow would be first an email and then a wait step for one day, another email, wait step for one day, another email, and that will go on for seven days. So the first action that I'm going to do is I'll have an email here to so send email. And again, you have the option to have plain text emails right here, or you can also have the option to choose from template. So in my case, I want to maybe choose this master template that we got here. And for me to, so that this exact template won't be like, you know, uh, won't be affected with what I'm going to do with the exact content for this email. I'm going to click on edit. And instead of it editing this actual master email template here, I'm going to save this exact email as a new template. So I can mm -hmm. still use my master template from time to time if I'm going to send emails. So to how to do that, just click on save as a new template. I'm calling it, for example, seven day email sequence. I'll just call it like that. And then email one. So this is usually how we label our emails. So just click on continue. And automatically, this email right here will be replaced with the seven days ES, uh, DES email with the same content, but a sep separate like email template. So that's basically the email that I'm going to add. So I'll just close this down. You will understand why I did it uh, on, the pre uh, on the following step. Uh, set your from name and from email. If you're using custom values, that would be fine as long as you got your business details on the settings set up. So I'll maybe show you that one in a bit. And then don't forget to add it subject. I'll just maybe put in hello text. Just click on save action or maybe I'll label it first. Maybe I'll label it as email one day one. And this action might look like this. Since we already have the first email in there, what we're going yeah, to do is I'm on, I'm on. we can have the next wait step. So I'm adding the wait step. And since we want to send out these emails for seven days every day, I'm just going to have one day wait step here. You also have the option to do the advanced window so it could be sent out an exact time on the day. For example, uh, you want to send it out one day after that, but it needs to be sent out every 8 a.m., 7 p.m., stuff like that. You also have the option to uh, customize it or specify it here, uh, specify it from here. But I'll just turn that off uh, and then saving this action. And then after that one, this will be the wait step for one day. So what basically means if, if we add them to the workflow, they'll receive this first email, right? And then after that, they will be put in hold for one day. And then the next step would be the email. And to make it easier for you, this is what I usually do. Just click on the three dots next to the first email you got. Copy. Copy all actions from here. What it does is it will copy all of these steps that you got from the workflow. And if I'm going to click on copy here, it will be pasted into the next workflow. So that's how you're going to copy these steps. 
And to make it easier, I'll copy all these four uh, actions. Copy, copy all actions from here. Paste it here. And we now have, I think, one, two, three, four sets of emails. I'm going to add another set. So we can have a total of seven emails. So yeah. So this for example, this is email one, day one. And this one would be uh, email two, day two. You don't have to like update the wait step because we already formatted it. And then what you're going to do, since the email template from here is for email one, day one, what you're going to do is you're going to update this email template again. And this time, save it as your seven-day um, uh, nurture email sequence and then uh, email two. So I'm going to save a new copy for this template so it, uh, it, it won't like affect the existing template being added to this email. Uh, click on continue, then click on save. Because what will happen if you're going to continue editing that exact template uh, and it's attached to the first email that you got here, it will also, uh, the changes you made from email to or date you will also reflect for uh, the day one emails. So it needs, you need to save those templates from time to time whenever you're going to send out emails. So yeah, so that's very basically the steps. I'll just leave the other step for you or the other step actions to like uh to set up. That's but that's pretty much it. After you have done with that email, what you're going to do is you need to put that email on. Uh, I mean this workflow and publish. Just click on save, and you should be all good. And the second step that we need to do is we need to head over to the contact list, and then for example. Um, if you want all the people in your mailing list to be added to that workflow, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight everyone in, and then it would be this third um icon on uh on the top, add to workflow, and then in here you're going to specify it to the exact workflow. So in my case, I want to add all these contacts in the smart list to the seven days nurturing email sequence, so they can receive all the emails for seven days consecutively. But yeah, but I would do that. I'll maybe just set it to myself. Uh, maybe just here. I'll add this contact into the workflow. Just click on this bulk action right here. Proceed. And then the workflow will be seven day email sequence. Just put your actions into like basically whatever. Maybe I'll just put in manual workflow, stuff like that. Add to automations and automatically that contact should now be added to your workflow. And then, for example, to double check if the contact uh, has added to the workflow, what you can do is you can go back to the workflow and to maybe uh, make it easier for you, if you're going to click on this button right here, it will actually show you all the recent workflows you have uh, updated. So, for example, for the seven days, this is what we did earlier, right? And as you can see, we now have one total enrollees here, which is basically the contact that I added to the workflow. Uh, let me just go into the workflow so I can uh, clearly show it to you what's been happening. So, yeah. So, this is how the workflow looks like. The email has been sent out to uh, to Nat. And then she's currently here onto the wait stop waiting for the next day to receive the next email. So, that's basically it. And to check on the execution history, uh, you can all see that this exact content right here, Nat, the next execution date for her to send out the next execution or the next action, which is the email, will be on May 2nd at 9.43 a.m. So that's how you're going to verify if your workflow is working and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then another way to, uh, to add people into your workflow is to uh, go here. So, for example, let's have this uh, fake Felix. If you're going to scroll down to the context, uh, context like contact record, um, this right here for the automations, you can also add the contact. But this this can only be done manually or or individually. But if you want to do it on bulk, you can just do it on a contact record. But for example, if you want to do it individually, you can also do it from here. So yeah, any questions so far? Are we all good? Yeah. Because I think I actually covered all of the topics that we need to discuss for the day. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, you can definitely like ask. Because if not, we can just definitely wrap up, uh, wrap up here. So yeah.
So if you guys have any questions about me and the system and our processes and stuff like that, uh, just email me at supportedtechmedics.com so we can jump on by a Zoom call. Or maybe you can also maybe send us the list of the questions you got so we can be prepared before our call. So yeah, mm. I think we're pretty much all good. So I'm going to end our call today. Thank you so much for joining uh, with us for our Tech Toolbox for today. See you next Wednesday. Have a good day. Bye-bye.